Hey everyone, and welcome to another one of my weekly art videos. Today I am sharing a beginner-friendly, Christmas-inspired watercolor tutorial. I am taking you through my entire process for this wreath painting that's just perfect for greeting card designs to give away this holiday season. I start out by explaining how I create my preliminary pencil sketch, I take you through my color swatches, and then I take you through all of my favorite techniques and how I do my layering of different kinds of leaves to add fullness to the wreath. Before starting with the painting process, I share how to paint three different kinds of leaves, which I highly recommend practicing before jumping into the final piece. All right, with all that said, let's jump in. To begin, I'm gonna be creating a very basic sketch for myself to work off of. When I am painting wreaths, even if it's a very loose wreath, I like having a circle right there on my watercolor sheet because all of these different elements that I'm gonna be adding into the wreath, whether it's flowers, in this case a bow, leaves, etc., they're all going to be growing out of or attached to that central circle. So we need to make sure that we're visualizing that circle. For this Christmas wreath, I'm also going to be adding in the bow since the very beginning because this is a pretty large element that I want to make sure that I visualize properly because it has fabric folds and different parts to that ribbon that are overlapping, etc. So I'm going to be adding that in since the very beginning as well. You can feel free to bring in a circular object to place on your watercolor sheet and trace around if you'd like. I'm just going to be drawing my circle freehand. I don't expect perfection. I do want to make sure that I'm keeping my sketch nice and light. I'm going to be using an HB pencil. I don't want to press down hard as I am creating my sketch because I don't want to be able to see my pencil work through my paint at the end. So starting out with my circle and sometimes when I'm going to be drawing my circle freehand, I just like creating a few tick marks for myself so that I can understand how big I want that circle to be within my watercolor sheet. I did leave extra space at the bottom because there's going to be a pretty large bow right here and the ribbon is going to be hanging down. So once my tick marks are in, I just kind of connect them with a curve. I have a video in which I explain why it's challenging to draw circles and curves and I provide exercises that can help you improve your circles and ellipses. I'll make sure to link to it down below in case you want to check that out. So there's a very basic circle. Just going to clean it up a bit. Now I'm gonna be drawing that bow right here in that central bottom section of the wreath. For me, it's easier to start with that central ribbon section. I'm gonna place it right here, right in the center of the wreath, and then it's gonna be a double bow, so. All right, so this is the inner part of the ribbon that we can see into. Erasing some pencil work there. And then down here, I'm gonna have another one. So I'm gonna do, this one is going to be behind this one. So I'm just gonna do the bottom part as well. I'm gonna close this a little. All right, so this is a double bow. So the top one and the bottom one. And now I'm gonna try to recreate that, but flipped, kind of mirrored, going the opposite direction. So I start with that front part of the bow, and then I do the little loop this little oval section that we can see into. I think this one needs to be a little bit larger. And now I'm gonna be adding the one underneath. So we have the front part, and then I just add the little cave that we can see through. And make this one a little bit larger. It's okay if your bow is not perfectly symmetrical, as long as everything is making sense. Right? And you understand what are the front parts and what's the inner part, right? And you can erase the pencil work that you no longer need. And now all I need are the sections of ribbon hanging down from here. So we have one and we have another here. 
Everything is super easy to erase because I'm not pressing down hard at all and I'm keeping everything nice and light. But that's my bow and that's all I'm gonna be needing for my preliminary sketch. Now, if you need a light in your sketch, what I like doing is I like using a kneaded eraser and just gently tapping over sections that I wanna clean up or lighten before getting started with the painting process. Because once things have been covered with paint, you can no longer erase that pencil work. And the last thing that I always like visualizing when I'm gonna be painting a wreath is how the different sections of the wreath are going to be meeting or connecting. I want a section of leaves to be going counterclockwise and another section to be going clockwise. And I usually don't have them meet right in the center here because that will just create a little bit too much symmetry when it comes to these organic elements. I usually like connecting the two parts somewhere off center, maybe around here. All right, so now that our pencil sketch is ready, I'm gonna be explaining about the colors that I'm gonna be bringing in. I'm just gonna be bringing in five different colors and my colors are from different brands. I'm gonna be swatching these colors out for you so that you can see what they look like on paper and you can just choose whichever colors you have available that are most similar to mine. The first color that I'm gonna be bringing in is Russian Green from St. Petersburg White Knights. This is the only color that I'm gonna be bringing in from my White Knights paint set and the reason why I wanna bring this green in is is because I really love this green and I don't have anything similar in my current watercolor palette that I'm using for my tutorials. This is a very deep, rich green on the warmer side. And I really love that it's so dark because I can create a nice range of values just with this single color. The second color that I'm gonna be bringing in is Pyrrol Scarlet, and this is from Daniel Smith. This is Pyrrol Scarlet. It's a very warm, vibrant red. Looks like this. And I'm gonna be using that red for my berries and the bow. The next color that I'm gonna be bringing in is Windsor Lemon from Windsor & Newton. This is a bright, cool yellow, and it looks like this. And I'm not gonna be using this yellow by itself. I'm gonna be adding it into the green to create lighter, brighter green values for my leaves. The next color that I'm gonna be bringing in is Raw Umber, and it's a brown that looks like this. This is Raw Umber from Windsor & Newton. And then finally, I'm gonna be bringing in some Payne's Gray to darken other colors. This is what Payne's Gray looks like. This is also from Winsor & Newton. It's a cool blue biased gray. As I said, I'm gonna be creating lighter green values by adding Winsor Lemon into my green. Sometimes I'm gonna be using my green in a lighter version with the Windsor Lemon in it. And I'm gonna be adding some Payne's Gray into my Pyrrol Scarlet to create some darker values in the berries. And that would look like this. I can also add Payne's Gray into the brown to create a slightly darker version of my brown for the little twigs and branches that I'm gonna be bringing in. All right, so now we're gonna be practicing the three different leaves that we're gonna be bringing into this wreath. And this is so that we can move through the process more smoothly and arrive at better results. I'm gonna be bringing in three paint brushes to paint this wreath. These are all round brushes. This is a size 14, this is a size 10, and this is a size three. As long as you use something that is similar to this or around the size, you're gonna be fine. I do try to make sure, especially when I'm painting loose potatoes, Botanicals, that my paintbrushes come to a nice fine tip because that's gonna help you paint the leaves better. To begin, I'm gonna show you the larger, wider leaves. And these larger leaves, I'm gonna be painting with my larger size 14 round brush, loading up a good amount of paint, and these larger, wider leaves are gonna be painted with two brush strokes. So first I go in, and do that. It's kind of like a open C stroke. And then 
I go down like that. I talk about C strokes and provide different exercises on basic brush strokes in another video that I'm gonna make sure to link to down below. Those exercises and drills that I share in that video will help you with your brush control and also your water control. So let me do that again and make sure that you practice these in different directions. Okay, so that's kind of a C stroke there. I'm gonna touch the tip of my paintbrush to that tip of the leaf, and I'm just gonna go down like that. Sometimes I'm gonna have a little space left unpainted right there, a little sliver of paper shining through, and that's perfectly fine. It'll end up looking like a highlight. Taking a little bit more of my green, let's do this again, maybe change the angle so that you can practice different, different angles because the leaves are gonna be going around the wreath, and you're gonna have to add them in different or orientations in space. So touch my paintbrush, go like that, touch the tip of my paintbrush to the tip of the leaf, and another C stroke going up. And if you want to add a little bit of a jagged edge, tooth edge to any of your leaves, you can do that while the paint is still wet. Just add a little bit of a brush stroke, right? creating a little bit of a jagged edge. It's easy. As long as the paint is still wet, you can just add a little bit of a, a tooth along the edge. And you don't have to do that to all of your leaves. You can leave some of the edges smooth. They'll just end up looking like different types of leaves. But you can always make them a little bit more irregular. So let me try again. Tip of my paintbrush, little bit of a C stroke, touch the tip of my paintbrush to the tip of the leaf, and go in the opposite direction. All right, so I can make that little highlight shape a little bit smaller. Maybe add in a little bit of an irregular edge. Try in another direction, load up a good amount of paint. Touch my paintbrush to the paper. This is the tip of the leaf down here, so I touch and go up. All right, so these are going to be the larger leaves. And for the medium leaves, I'm gonna be using my size 10 round brush. And the medium leaves are easier, they're just one single stroke. And once again, we're using the shape of the paintbrush bristles to help us create the shape of the leaf. So we touch, and we just go like that. Touch. Touch. Touch, go down, touch, touch and pull. Press and pull. Press and pull. So for these medium sized leaves, the tip of the leaf is actually this rounded part over here, created by the tip of the paintbrush. And then this bottom part right here is where the leaf is going to be connected to the branches and the twigs in the center, okay? Press and pull, press and pull. And then the smallest leaves are gonna be kind of like filler leaves, if you will, to add more fullness to the wreath. And those are just going to be kind of like grasses that we're gonna be painting with one single stroke. For these grasses, I'm gonna be using my size three round brush. And I wanna make sure that I can create a long single stroke And if you find that your line or long shape that you're trying to paint is breaking and you're creating more of a dry brushing effect, try adding a little bit more water into the paint. Press and lift. Try to create soft curves instead of straight lines because straight lines will end up looking super stiff. That is too stiff and you can see the dry brushing effect right there in the center. So for these long strokes, you definitely want to make sure that you're paying attention to the consistency of your paint and make sure that it has enough water in it so that you can create those grasses with a thin, consistent stroke. So these are the three main leaves that we're going to be bringing in. And sometimes I'm going to be adding yellow into my green and using the green in a lighter state with a lighter value. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my first layer of red in the bow. What I'm trying to do with this first layer is create those lightest red values. And then I'm going to allow that red to dry and I'm going to be 
creating a second layer to darken certain areas and define edges of certain parts of the bow. I'm gonna go in with a bit of Pyrrole Scarlet. I'm using my size 10 round brush for this, by the way. You can see how I'm trying to create a light layer of red where the Pyrrole Scarlet is pretty watered down. And I'm trying to paint quick so that I'm not left with texture and lines and marks throughout that bow shape. Okay, so you can see how this first layer is relatively light. I can go in with a tiny bit of Pyrrole Scarlet again and drop in some of this more saturated, pigmented color in shadow areas that I'm gonna be pushing later with that second layer. That's enough for now. I remove that paint from my paintbrush bristles and I can go in to do lifting to reveal a little bit of that paper under that paint and bring some dimension back into areas that maybe I have flattened a little bit too much. Developing a little bit of a range of values, even with that first layer with a single color. I'm gonna get started with painting in the larger, wider leaves. So I'm gonna switch on over to my size 14 round brush and I'm gonna make sure that I have enough of my nice juicy green puddle on my palette and I can even create a bit of a lighter green right beside it by mixing in a little bit of my Windsor Lemon into that second puddle because I do wanna create a nice range of green leaves. So I'm loading up a good amount of this green in my brush and remember this side is going clockwise and this side is going counterclockwise. So I get started with those larger leaves, one, two, one, two, one, two. Thinking of those leaves in, in clusters, a little bit of a irregular edge. Taking more green, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Irregular edge here and there. Taking some lighter green by adding in some Windsor Lemon. One, two, one, two, Two. Trying to make my way around the bow so that I don't get green in the bow. And you can definitely make some smaller leaves and some larger leaves. All you have to do is vary the pressure that you're exerting on your paintbrush. If you press down more, then more of that belly of that brush is gonna come into contact with the paper, making that leaf or that section of that leaf wider. And if you don't press down as much, the shape is gonna be smaller. So you can vary the size of these larger leaves. And I do want to make sure to leave space for my berries. I'm going to be adding a good group of berries here, another one here, perhaps over here. Two. If you don't like the shape of your leaf, you can change it. All right, I think that's a good amount of larger leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and change to my medium-sized brush. This is my size 10. And I'm gonna add in some lighter, smaller leaves with the size 10 round brush. So remember, slightly pressing down and pulling. 
slightly pressing down and pulling. Pressing down, pulling. Pressing down, pulling. Pressing down, pulling in. Pressing down, pulling in. And just add fullness to the wreath with these smaller leaves. Pulling, pulling. You can add them in pairs. You can add them in little groups. I'm gonna start adding in some berries. So I switch on over to my size three round brush and I'm gonna use my Pyrrole Scarlet to create some nice berries. And I'm just gonna do a circle. I'm gonna leave a little teeny tiny highlight in many of these to create a little sense of roundness. Circle. I want to cluster them together in different ways. Make them slightly different sizes as well. Visualize how they're going to be connected together with a twig or a branch. Want some nice big ones. Remember to bring in variety in terms of sizes and how you're grouping them together. All of these elements are slowly but surely adding fullness to the wreath. And just a few more. Later I'm going to be adding more berries and darkening some of these. I don't want to go overboard with the berries. So now I'm gonna go in with my raw umber. I'm gonna keep using my size three round brush and I'm gonna start adding in a little sense of that twig or branch, uh, holding these different elements together. I'm skipping over leaves. I like a little line weight variation as I'm painting that branch or that twig. I sometimes press down the belly of my brush a little bit more, sometimes I lift it more as I'm painting that, that stroke for that branch. I'm gonna add a little pyrrole scarlet into my raw umber to create a brownish red. And I'm gonna use this brownish red to paint the little twigs connecting the berries to that branch. I've been painting all of this pretty fast. So you can see some bleeding effects happening here, a little bloom over here, because I'm moving nice and fast. And I'm just embracing those, those things that are happening. They help add interest to the piece. skipping over the berries. Add a few extra twigs with my raw umber mixture, which can also help add fullness and points of interest to the composition. All right. I'm gonna work on the second layer in the bow. So I'm gonna go back to my size 10 round brush, back to my Pyrrol Scarlet. Now that it has dried, you can see that it's looking lighter. So now I'm gonna be working on the midtones and the darkest darks. So taking into account the structure and three-dimensionality of this bow, where would I see darker values? Definitely in here, in here, here and here. Removing that paint from my paintbrush bristles and going in and softening those edges because I'm painting wet on dry, so I'm being left with sharp defined edges around those shapes that I'm painting in. But I'm trying not to cover the entire thing. I don't want to get rid of those lightest values that I have already created. If I do, I'm gonna flatten everything out. So I do wanna leave lighter areas. 
I'm just looking to push the darker shadow areas. And I allow myself to go in with my Pyrrole Scarlet in a slightly more saturated, thicker state, whereas initially I used my Pyrrole Scarlet in a more watered down state when I was developing those lightest values. Going in and darkening shadow sections. Sometimes I'm leaving it as a mid-tone and other times I'm going in and darkening more. Darkening the edges of these curves so that I can create a little bit of a rounded look. I'm gonna allow that to dry, and in the meantime, I'm gonna keep working on that wreath. I'm gonna add some grasses, some thin, long leaves. For this, I'm gonna go back to my size three round brush. I'm gonna start with a lighter green, more watered down green. Remember the general direction and also the slight curve when you're adding in these longer grassy leaves. And also remember to add these in with slight curves. A little bit more green, make them darker. and constantly come back to see everything as a whole composition. That is gonna help you stay away from adding too many leaves going overboard, and it's also going to help you keep things balanced. All right, so at this point, just notice if there are any areas where you wanna keep adding more leaves or more berries. I am going to go back to my size 10 round brush and I'm gonna be adding in some smaller leaves here and there. Press and pull, press and pull. Press and pull. Press, pull. Going back to my size three round brush, adding in a few more berries, but this time I'm gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray into my Pyrrol Scarlet so that I can add some darker berries. And sometimes I'm just going over berries that I've already added in and darkening those. And other times I'm adding new ones. Also, if you find that you have covered up one of your berries with green and you want to go over that berry again to brighten the red and uh, intensify it, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go back to my size 14 round brush and I'm gonna create more of my dark green color mixture. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over some of my largest leaves to really bring them forward. This one here. One, two. Adding a little bit of an irregular edge. One, two a regular edge. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of lifting 
and some of these. Using the clean and only slightly damp bristles of my paintbrush as a little absorbent sponge. This helps me remove a little bit of that excess paint off my paper to reveal a little bit more of that paper under that paint. Provides a little bit more dimension to the leaves. And finally, I'm gonna go into the bow one last time. And this time I'm using Pyrrole Scarlet with a tiny bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm gonna be using this darker version of my Pyrrole Scarlet to just push those darkest dark areas inside the bows and in darkest shadow areas. Once I've painted in those dark red shapes, I go ahead and soften some sections of these dark shapes by going in and doing some lifting with my paintbrush again, revealing a little bit more of that paper under that paint so that it's not super stark looking. Can add more pyrrol scarlet into the mixture to lighten it a little. And if I wanna push some areas that are dark but not as dark as the inner parts of the bow. Softening here with a clean and slightly damp brush. And we're almost done. Adding some last few grasses here. And with that, we're all done with this watercolor Christmas wreath. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please, make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.